Hello everyone and welcome back to Park Development in Kerbal Space Program. We are currently in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 stock system, but the part that I'm going to show you should work in 1.2.2, 1.3.1, 1.4, uh, and in uh, I'll show you how it works in Realism Overhaul. Uh, but uh, for now we are in stock because you should always test your parts in stock first. And the part I'm going to show you is a tug. And the reason I created it is more for realism overhaul than here, and that's because generally my tugs involve a lot of parts. And they're mostly used in the context of space stations, and the space stations have a lot of parts. So it tends to be quite a lot of a lag in the space station's physics range. So I wanted a one-part tug so that I could avoid that lag, at least from the tugs. And if you saw my uh, Shuttle Constructed Mars Mission videos, that's basically the situation that we're talking about. The tugs there have a lot of parts, and they don't exactly control the modules very well, and I thought I should create something that would do the job a little bit better. But it, it works just fine in stock too, so let's take a look at it once we reach orbit over here. I, I slapped together a very easy, quick rocket, so... Uh, do not uh, try and parse out whether this was an efficient rocket or not. It's carrying more fuel than it really needs for this purpose. Okay, as we continue to orbit, this is the tug, and of course I've got a module here to try it out with. Uh, so this would be a module that we're attaching to a station. It's not solely for stations. Uh, the center portion here, you can fit something long ways in here that is a 1.875 meter tank, 4 meters long. So that's what that size is for, but of course the science lab is too big for that, so we're going to actually attach it to this uh, location. So there are nodes here and over there, but I don't have docking ports there because we aren't going to use it. Okay, let's shut that down. Uh, currently it does not have built-in solar panels or radiators. Uh, radiators are more for realism overhaul because of the fuel choice that I use there, but uh, I'll have a model 2 version that has built-in solar panels. The docking port of course is not part of the part. Everything else here is part of the tug itself. You can see right now that it doesn't have much of a reaction wheel so um, that is one thing that it lacks. Actually it does have a mild reaction wheel, a very weak one. You can see reaction wheel is normal. So if you feel like it ought to have a more powerful reaction wheel, then you can just edit the part. Now, it's going to come with a stock configuration and a realism overhaul configuration. And regardless of whether I say for realism overhaul or needs realism overhaul, it seems like if I have the realism overhaul configuration in the stock game, uh, it seems to try and load it, which is wrong, obviously. So when you unzip it, make sure you don't use the realism overhaul configuration. Just delete it if you're in the stock game or the stock system. Only use that with realism overhaul, otherwise it'll mess things up. Okay, we are in orbit. So uh, how it goes is basically we need a couple here and then we do the sort of Apollo thing. So this now RCS, that's the wrong way. It's apparently it's controlling from down there. But we have docking ports here and here so that we can control from either of those locations as well. But what we really want to do is control from here. It does have an antenna, and so it does have communication. I believe I copied the Communitron 8888 for it, which might be a little bit OP. I haven't played stock in a while, so I didn't know which antenna would be the most appropriate to copy. Okay, so set target. But in addition to the RCS ports, which you see We've got some here, and then we also have the forward and back, back ones here. We also have the main thrusters, which are 30 kilonewtons apiece in, in stock. They're a little bit less in realism overhaul. Okay, we've grabbed it. Now, actually, I'm going to deorbit this, because <laughs> uh, why not? Okay, so the stage is now on a suborbital trajectory. We're going to decouple. Now, 
these engines over here are no longer in line with the center of mass, right? Because of the science lab is offsetting it. But the tug itself is pretty heavy with all of its fuel. It carries a lot of fuel. Uh, it's uh, eight tons of fuel, and it's about nine tons in total. The science lab is only 3.5 tons. So we can do a lot of business here with uh, the thrusters, even though it's imbalanced. So let's take a look at that. Let's control from the front. Now, of course, with it in balance, the RCS has to control it. If you up the power of the rea reaction wheel, it might not have to. But I'm keeping it to one-third thrust, so it doesn't have to do too much of that. So, right now, it's got no um, solar panels, so it's going to be consuming its 400 electric charge. You could toss the module up. Uh, if the tug is ready in orbit, you could toss the module up on a stage and have the tug rendezvous with it grab it and as you can see it's got plenty of delta V built in structural mass wise it's basically a fuel tank with two little engines and you know uh, the smallest controller and an antenna so it does have hibernation though and if we make sure that we uh, are hibernating in warp auto and I think we could actually transfer the moon right now. Let's see. Let's go. Let me go full thrust to see if it can hold it. It's using a lot of mob repellent for it, though. I probably should have st started earlier. Its burn time is quite long. I meant this mainly as a fuel transfer vehicle. And that it could take a supplementary tank in the middle. But it could also transfer its own fuel into the station if necessary. Or whatever you want to resupply. It is obviously not designed for, like, people to walk through, like a Cygnus or a Dragon spacecraft or something like that, carrying those kinds of supplies. That's not, that's not quite what this is for. Uh, but the mob propellant is depleting. Ooh, without the mob propellant, we definitely spin out of control. <laughs> uh, let's see how the reaction wheel does, the very, very limited reaction wheel. You can see it's taking quite a long time to restore this, so it's pretty weak right now. Okay, maybe I can up the reaction wheel just a little bit. <laughs> this is, this I might have overdone it in a very realism over holly kind of way. We're gonna run out of mob propellant, so yeah, I mean it's uh, maybe just using liquid fuel and oxidizer for the RCS might be a better idea. I'll get your thoughts on that, uh, stock players. Just try and get this up. They're gonna have to probably flip around. We no longer have mod propellant, so that's gonna be a problem. Okay, well, we have a moon approach. We are tumbling out of control, but I do not have persistent rotation. <laughs> so, we'll cheat that ways. So, yeah, I think it would be prudent of me to... Oh, why is there that flickering over there? That's weird. That's weird though. Oh, it's probably a scatterer thing. Yeah. Well, probably if I go back to Space Center and come back, it'll be alright. But anyway, if we had sufficient control, this could make orbit around the moon. Uh, I think I'm going to up the reaction wheel for you guys before I zip it up uh, for the stock configuration by a factor of 10 over what it has right now. So naturally, in realism overhaul, my intention is to use the tug in the context of our shuttle-constructed Mars mission, and specifically to deliver supplies to that mission as it is currently in orbit around the moon, which is a little bit taxing. Now, to do that, I probably ought to slap radiators on the tug, because we will have boil-off issues otherwise. So, Probably eventually I'm going to just build in the radiators and add a little bit more mass to it. Right now it doesn't have radi radiators, we will need to work on that. And uh, it does have enough internal electric charge so that it can last the duration of a trip to the moon. But uh, it of course does not have built in solar panels so that's another addition that I'll add to the Mark II version of the tug which is currently being lifted in the shuttle with six tons of cargo. That's how much it can carry in its base model, the same size that we had in the stock version. 
if we have the centaur as well to handle the translunar injection. So the centaur sends it over to the moon, the tug itself makes orbit around the moon, and takes the six tons of supplies to the mission. Now, being able to carry only six tons at a time does sort of limit our, uh, well, it, it requires a lot of shuttle launches in order to resupply that Mars mission. So, I hope you like shuttle launches. Now, because I want to save it all for the shuttle videos, the shuttle Mars mission videos, I'm not going to run through the whole mission here. But here we are making, well, not quite orbit because the shuttle still has to do its OMS burn. But you will see some of the struggles that I've had to go through in the next shuttle video, which will not include this tug. But that should suggest why I decided to design this tug. Uh, its uh, fuel ratio is reasonable. I actually put together the tanks and some structure and the relevant equivalent parts in the VAB to see how much it would weigh and then gave my model that weight. Uh, it is assuming service module tanks because I want to uh, limit boil off. So it's actually fairly heavy for the fuel mass. I think uh, the structural mass of it is more than 10% the fuel mass. And considering the model is basically just two fuel tanks attached by a bunch of struts and then some tiny little engines, um, I think that's reasonable, more than reasonable. Okay, here's how it all looks in the cargo bay of the shuttle. The Centaur G at the back there and then the tug and then the payload in the center which is xenon gas for the ion engines for our Mars mission and of course a docking port because we need that. Um, it is the same size as the one you saw in stock of course in relation to realism overhaul uh, standards it's much smaller. It is not rescaled because it was actually originally scaled specifically for this purpose Though I contemplated putting tweak scale though, because it has engines built in, that's a little bit dodgy. I might uh, just create other models of it. There is a somewhat rescaled one that allows a 2.5 meter diameter center tank. This one is 1.875, like I said in the stock portion. But right now we're going to decouple node. Ooh. I don't know why decoupling that docking port seems to fling it off like that, but okay. Let's just boost it up a little bit. Okay, well, that'd be good enough for now. It's actually carrying more fuel than it ought to for this purpose. We should uh, reduce the amount of methane and oxygen so that the uh, Delta V on the Centaur stage is 3,100. Decouple mode. There we go. The Centaur has its own controller and can deorbit itself if necessary, so why don't we do that? This is from Raidernik's US Rockets Pack. It's part of the Titan IV batch. Now, there's no reaction wheel on this. The control portion is this little box right here with the antenna on top of it. And so that's where I imagine the electric charge and such would be. The fuel tanks are not separate, so you can't just um, move fuel from one to the other. It's all one part, so you can't do anything about that. But anyway, we... And the RCS thrusters on here use the methane and oxygen, otherwise it'd be too complicated. And contrary to what I want anyway, it'd be inefficient to have some other fuel. I think I'm just using stockish plumes for these. They look okay. I don't mind that look. But as you can see with uh, 6 ton payload and full fuel tanks, it has 2,300 meters per second. Maybe that's alright even if we don't have the full TLI with the Centaur stage. I meant for it to be only partly fueled and then it'd have 1,300 to 1,500 ish meters per second and then the Centaur would do the full TLI. But this is, this is probably good too. The important thing is that we should be able to rendezvous with the Mars mission in orbit around the moon and in the next video for that series you'll see the troubles I have with that and how much Delta V it really needs. It's not the mere 800 meters per second it takes to get into orbit around the moon because the Mars mission is in a very high orbit. 
But for now, I'm gonna shut these down. These are each... Actually, uh, let's throttle up to see the... It's 30 kilonewtons total, so that's 15 kilonewtons each. Uh, burning methane and oxygen for 364 seconds of ISP. The R RCS runs at a lower ISP. I forget exactly the number, but I think it's like 340, 350-ish. So that, those are the stats for that. And they have infinite ignitions for now. I haven't decided to limit the ignitions or anything of that sort. And of course, pressure fed because we've got the little helium tanks. But anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to link the part in the video description, of course, and you can play around with it as you see fit. Please do tell me if there are any problems with it that you think ought to be fixed. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.